just just briefly about the game Saturday. We it was more a methodical win. There wasn't a lot of explosiveness to it, or uh, you know, we did put the ball up the field a little bit and made some plays up the field, but just wasn't as, as explosive as uh, maybe we needed to be. But uh, defense played outstanding. I, you know, they were uh, suffocating again, and uh, what 120. Seven yards and uh, seven points, and and uh, you know really did a fine job of tackling again. That's been a our mo through the first three weeks is is really good tackling on defense, uh, offense. Those are our best numbers of the of the season, uh, total yardage wise, point wise, um, and so you know some good things. No, I don't want to downplay it because we you know, we won the football game, but now it's uh, like I said on to. Uh, Pac-12 play, um, starting with UCLA this week. Good football team, well coached, ton of talent, uh, a ton of really good players, and and uh, they've really done a good job with the portal guys they brought in, and and uh, <clears throat> they're uh, a team that that uh, is going to be a you know great matchup for us. So we have them at home. Uh, hopefully, our home crowd shows up like it uh, almost always does and provides a a big uh, home field advantage for us. That's uh, Definitely uh, something that, that we feed off of at Rice Eccles is that crowd. So we're hoping that uh, it's uh, very raucous this week and, and, uh, and you know, uh, very in our favor. So uh, questions start with you, Justy. What do you got? Okay, it's got two parts. Two okay. part, we're expanding. Yeah. Did you uh, clear that with me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, I forgot to tell you. Okay, all right. On Saturday, the first quarter, Weaver State had too many TFLs on Utah's running backs. How are we going to rectify that with UCLA coming in? Yeah, we did uh, take a little bit of, although we scored on our first drive, but then we hit a little bit of a lull. Uh, they did a nice job with their movement. Uh, they weren't uh, really big up front, but they were quick and, and uh, a lot of a lot of slanting, gap exchange, that type of thing, which we didn't handle very well initially, which led to, led to the... Uh, TFLs and the lack of uh, run game production early on. And so that would be the answer to part one. And now let's, okay. with bated breath, part okay. two. It says Utah special teams were not up to Utah standards. What is the plan on moving forward? Well, we punted the ball exceptionally well. We're leading the conference. We're number six in the nation. Uh, Jack is in punting. I think we're ninth in the nation. Maybe it's six, uh, in the net punt. So the punt game is, is outstanding and was very good on Saturday. We made all of our PAT and field goals that we attempted. We did have the, the snap that we mishandled, never got the kickoff, uh, never got the kick underway. Uh, the big issue was kickoff coverage. That was the big glaring issue. Uh, give a lot of credit to their guy. That, punt, that kickoff returner that they have is exceptional. Maybe the best we'll face all year long. <clears throat> so that was a lot of the reason for it. Uh, and we just got to cover better. We got to cover the kicks better, and, and you know, it starts with better coaching. And so uh, I would say that was uh, our biggest glaring weakness of, of the whole football team last week was was the lack of kickoff coverage. So, uh, okay, no three-part questions starting <laughs> no. next week. Okay. Uh, All right. Didn't hold them out. They were just no, injured. Yeah, yeah, just injured. And so we hope so. I've been hoping that for – going on three weeks now and so uh hopefully this week we'll get some of them back I, I, as we sit here right now i can't say for certain on any of them uh, and so that's where we are we lost another uh, two or three guys maybe four guys in the last game that'll be questionable this week and so it's been uh it's been really crazy the way that uh, that has played out but but uh the guys that have had the opportunity to step in and pick up the slack have done a great job. Uh, and back to the game, I thought Nate, for his first start as a collegiate quarterback, I thought he handled it pretty darn good and, and played well. Uh, didn't press, didn't get uh, you know, no panic in him whatsoever. Just proceeded to run the offense uh, for all four quarters until we pulled him out there at the last. But but I thought it was a good job by Nate in uh, in Cam's absence and, and getting his first start. So, yeah. if, if Cam and Brant don't continue to play for a while, how how much does this offense need to change, or do you change with, with Nate, or, or kind of what what is your approach moving forward? Well, you saw what we did with Nate. Quite a few QB runs, you know, more so than we would do typically with Cam. Uh, that's one of Nate's strengths. I mean, he did throw the ball fairly well. His his uh, I think he's a one fifty five. He's somewhere in the top fifty in the nation in QBR, uh, which for you know first. 
first year or first time guy starting is, is pretty good. And, uh, you know, knock on wood, we haven't turned it over. Uh, so it would be more of, you know, what you saw Saturday more in that uh, realm of, uh, you know, QB run, play action pass, uh, things like that. But he's he'll continue to evolve as a quarterback, and, and the more he evolves, the more we can expand and put more on his plate. With, with so many guys missing time because of injury, are there some unknowns about the script? Some kind of feeling things out and figuring out what you can do with the players that are out there. Yeah, there is, and and uh, it's it's been challenging, like I said, but. But uh, we've been able to piece it together these first three weeks and, and find combinations that work and, and uh, you know, make adjustments, uh, modifications here and there. But, uh, you know, it will sure be nice to hopefully start to get some of these guys back. With as many guys out as there are, is it tough to kind of have a full sense of what this team is and what it is? Very tough. Yeah, I think if we're sitting here at complete full strength, I think we're a very good football team. And so, uh, but, you know, you can't, that's... Uh, you know, pointless really to think about that because that's not the case. And so you just do, uh, you know, the best you can with, with the circumstances that you have. I think a lot of people have been surprised by uh, McLean and what he did. You know, a lot of talk about him coming in, but what does he bring to the top? Yeah, big physical receiver, 6'3", 220 pounds. And it doesn't look like he's running very fast, but he's running really fast. I can tell you that he's he's got a great forty time, and and he's just so smooth and effortless. It looks like he's just gliding, but but uh, made some plays up the field, and uh, had his best day as a youth by far. I mean, that was no no question about that. He made the most of his opportunity in Devon Bailey's absence, and uh, so uh, we'll see if he's available this week. <laughs> he's one of the guys that that uh, anyway. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see, but he's he's a he's a tremendous athlete. Kyle, you said you like Mikey Matthews' toughness. Mm-hmm. He said he gets that toughness from playing rugby. And I know when you scout guys, you often watch them play other sports. Uh uh-huh. If you watched him play rugby, and you made any sense of the game of rugby? I know about rugby, and I'm fairly familiar with it, uh, the rules and how it works. I never saw him play personally, but but knowing that he played rugby is. Uh, that shows toughness and signs of, uh, you know, the guy that uh, is not afraid. Uh, wrestlers also would fall in that category. That's a big plus as a as a, uh, a coach. When you look at a guy and he wrestles as well, you know there's a lot of toughness there. So so that definitely plays into uh, into the recruiting and and uh, adds to or takes away, as the case may be, from the from the interest you have in the player. UCLA has a, a freshman quarterback. Mm-hmm. They've been highly productive the last couple weeks since he took over as the starter. What are your impressions of him? What challenges does he present? Going to be outstanding. Uh, he already is really good, but uh, he's he's going to be really really good as as time goes on. Uh, same approach they took with uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson started him early and just groomed him and, and just. Uh, gave him all the reps and, and let him be the guy. Uh, a little bit different player than Dorian, not quite as much of a runner, but uh, he's uh, you know he's a really good player, like I said, and he's going to be uh, he already is productive. He's going to be outstanding before it's all over with. With how good your defense has been, does that give you maybe some latitude on your offensive side of the ball to kind of mm-hmm. you know work into the season, or and how does that work? For you? It does, and and we got a lot of confidence in that defense, and they've uh, performed very well through three games. And uh, we know that we don't, you're not going to have to score, hopefully, you know, most weeks 40 points to win. I mean, that's, you know, the defense is, has done a nice job of keeping teams uh, uh, out of the end zone and points off the board. And uh, you saw what Florida did to Tennessee. I mean, that's a, that's a good team. I knew they were a good team when we played them, and I think that uh, illustrated that. And uh, even more impressive when you saw that game as to what our defense, uh, how they performed in that game. So, so yeah, we got a lot of confidence in the defense, and, and uh, that does play into how we're approaching offense. It's the last time, for now at least, that you'll face UCLA as a conference opponent. I'm curious, how does losing Los Angeles as a market in the conference kind of impact the decisions you make recruiting-wise in terms of going to LA, going to California in general? Yeah. Not to stop, but how does that impact your ability to recruit? There. Yeah, well, it's been really good to us. First of all, Southern Cal in particular has been a, uh, a huge, hugely productive area for us. Uh, us moving into the other conference as well uh, changes that dynamic uh, quite a bit. 
uh, we will still recruit the Southern Cal area, but not as much manpower down there as we've had. We won't dedicate as many uh, coaches to that area as we have in the past. We're still gonna, you know, it's still gonna be part of our footprint, but more Texas, you know, more heading east uh, is what we, uh, and we've already started that because the next class we signed is for the next conference. And so we've already started the, made those changes and started to uh, put the emphasis uh, elsewhere. We've seen Nate's ability to run the ball, obviously, but he's also a very accurate passer. Mm -hmm. He's gone on two for a ton of yards in high school. We starting to see more of his throwing ability. Yep, the more uh, confidence that Coach Ludwig uh, has in him, which is building literally day by day, uh, the more you'll see the offense open up and let Nate, uh, as I mentioned, have more access to to a greater number of plays. And, and you know, his, his uh, menu, whatever you want to call it, his playlist was about half of what Cam Risings would be. And so, but that's, it, it was more than, uh, you know, in the games that he appeared in previously, it's expanded from that. And so it just keeps expanding and, and uh, he'll get to the point ultimately and eventually where he has everything at his disposal. Going into this match here, Kyle. Going into the match. I was looking at the octopus on this guy. Right here. Right here. What's the deal with that? But, oh, he has Nike shoes on? Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Sorry. Yeah. When you go from FCS to opponent to a conference opponent, what is that biggest change that you want to see? And how can you watch the tape and truly learn? Is it, is it details when you go from facing an opponent that you're essentially on a higher caliber of, and then now you're going to be more equal? Um, what's the biggest change you want to see? And what can you learn from the tape? From watching our previous tape against the FCS or watching the future tape against UCLA? Um, you, previous. Previous, okay. Well, previous, uh, as you mentioned, we, we should have a, a an FCS school outmanned, which we did. Uh, you know, we were, if we don't, there's we're doing something wrong, and that's not to be disparaging because they're a really good team and they'll win a lot of games. But uh, we're looking for alignment, assignment, angles to the ball, fundamentals, technique, that type of thing, more so than the, the final result. You know, we're looking at how we do things, not necessarily what we're doing, how we're doing them. And uh, I thought we did them pretty darn good on, de on defense on Saturday. And like I said, other than a few lulls in the game, offensively, we were pretty efficient. Follow up on that, Kyle. UCLA's had two money games and a trip to San Diego State. How much can you read into that? You assume that they're holding a lot of stuff back from conference ball. Yeah, we, we were fully, uh, fully aware that that's a possibility. Um, they haven't had uh, as rigorous a schedule as, as some guys, some teams in the, in the conference. But, uh, you know, you can tell a lot about, regardless of competition, just watching the players move, just like I, my uh, comparison that I just uh, talked about, you know, how they move, how fast they get from point A to point B, and, and uh, you know, just uh, overall athleticism, uh, Fundamentally, technique, you know, how sound they are with their with their fundamentals, particularly at the line of scrimmage and, and that type of thing. Obviously, you want to be prepared for every game, but just personally, do you get a little more amped up once conference season runs? Uh, no, I, I, every week's the same to me. I mean, every game counts the same. Every game is, uh, is darn important. And so uh, I think that's been one of our strengths through the years is to not – you know, get on the roller coaster, just be at a at a high level every week, and, and prepare the same way, and and uh, not uh, try to play outside the framework of our you know our schematics and our structures, and just just uh, be able to handle adversity, which we've done a, an excellent job of that this year so far. There wasn't much adversity this past week, but in the previous two weeks, and so uh, yeah, that's our approach. I, I know you. Just said week to week. That's, that's how you always approach things. But is there maybe a different challenge when you look ahead? Six of the last nine games against ranked opponents. The, the strength of the, of the Pac-12 is yeah. got to at least be on the line. It is uh, impressive. This conference so far this year has been very impressive. And uh, we play six of them, is what you said, six of the, so there's one we don't play. Six of nine. Yeah, six of nine. Two we don't play because we're one of the nine. But, but uh, it's uh, challenging. And, you know, it's ironic that, you know, the last year, I guess it's the last year of the Pac-12. I don't know what the possibilities are to, to uh, you know, to, to save it. But but uh, ironic that we would, you know, since I've been here and in the conference, I don't think there's any question it's the best football year that uh, we've ever had as far as a conference, you know, in, you know, in its entirety. Now it's only three weeks in, so things can change. But right now it looks pretty good. 
your depth of already been tested and the <laughs> depth behind the depth? <laughs> Uh, that's a great question. Um, typically, I think I talked a little bit about after the game, you got offensively and defensively, you get about 35 guys. Yeah, in fact, I did the number today, 36 guys, I think it was, that, that figure in prominently to what you're doing. And when you're down 16 of those, you know, you got 20 guys left and it's, it's, it starts to get really thin. But, uh, you know, no, like I said before as well, nobody cares. In fact, I'm sure UCLA is very thankful that uh, we're beat up, and and uh, so you just you can't sit there and and complain and whine. You just move forward. But but there is a point where you do start to run out of guys. So uh, we're not to that point ju just quite yet. But we're getting pretty thin. Is there a scenario where Brandon Rove could maybe serve as a backup tonight if he healthy? Where where is kind of his progression? Yeah. Well, we never talk about. You know who's available, who's not, and, and specifically, but but uh, he's missed so much time. It's going to be hard to catch up, and and you know when in fact he is uh, back with us, and and uh, it's almost uh, to the point where, barring unforeseen circumstances, he's probably out of time to get in the mix this year. How did Bryce kind of handle not being getting in the mix this week? Very well. He had a great attitude. There was no uh, sulking, pouting. Not that we pay any attention. That's the quickest way to eliminate yourself in this program is to sulk and pout. It gets you nowhere. Whining, sulking, crying just gets you nowhere. So our players know that. And so he had a great attitude, very supportive of Nate, and uh, practiced hard. He took all the number two reps. And Bryson Barnes, that's who he is as a person. He's just competitive and uh, is a team guy from the, you know, from the, from the get-go. Any other questions? Thanks, guys. All right.